Good morning, Kingsley community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Thursday morning, September 29th, 2022. So continue to pray for those who are in the midst of the storm down in Florida. Yes, my mother and father are safe and my brother-in-law and niece and father-in-law are all safe. So it all went around them. So, uh, but for the rest of them, lots of tragedy, lots of floating houses. So we want to keep them in our prayer. Fulfilling God's dream, Broad Street Publishing, be still a no. First Corinthians 7, verse 17, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. So this is the Apostle Paul writing to um, the churches, uh, not just Corinthian, the church in Corinth, but a number of churches because that letter would go around. Kind of like the book of Romans went around to a number of different churches. God created you perfectly to be the person he planned for you to be. He has plans for your life and purposes for your talents. When we long to be someone else or something else, we miss out on the incredible plan that God has for us, who we are right where we are. By devoting ourselves to live the life we've been called to, we fulfill God's excellent dream for our lives. There is no greater privilege than to honor our creator by living out the purpose he planned for us. So this makes me think of those spiritual gifts that God has given each person. So each person has at least one spiritual gift. And a lot of times that's really what you're good at. What are you good at doing? So if you don't know, ask your trusted friend, what am I good at doing? And then that's probably your um, spiritual gift. And the way you know it is if you, you start using it. And if it works, then that's probably it. So there's a lot of people that want to be singers. We've had a lot of people try out for the praise band. They can't sing. Bless their heart. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's not your spiritual gift. Your spiritual gift might be visiting people or it might be preparing meals or writing cards or praying or reading scripture or helping with the kiddos or, you know, helping the youth group, helping the youth group leader like me that's pulled in 75 different directions. Hello. <laughs> if you got a car, been background checked, I'll take you. If you think that's your gift. If not, I'll let you know. So, we each have a gift and we're to be using it for God's purpose. So it's to bring God glory, not us. We don't say it's my gift and I want to make sure I'm known for that gift. Then God's probably not going to use that gift really strongly in you. So don't worry about someone else's gift. If that's not your gift, that's okay. We can't do everything. <laughs> now, some people have more than one spiritual gift, but everyone has at least one. So find out what your spiritual gift is. They got all kinds of spiritual assessments online, but those are hard. You know, you can do them if you want. Um, I find them to be hard because they have a broad, you know, there's like six categories in the real broad, like one that I have supposedly is prophecy. Well, there are no more prophets um, that predict what's going to happen because we already know what's going to happen. But prophets meaning today, mean, meaning messenger of God's word. So makes sense, right? So um, find out what your gifts are, and if you have questions, you can email me here at the church, or you can ask a good friend what you are good at, and they'll probably reveal to you what it is that you're good at, and then you never thought about how you can use that um, to uh, bring glory to God, which means you don't take credit for it, you don't do it for money, you know, yeah, we have to work, but our spiritual gift might be discernment. Maybe you're that one in the middle of the kitchen where everybody's gossiping about the lady who's not in the room. And you say, you know what, let's let's get with her and see, you know, talk with her one on one and see if that's really true. That's very hard to do, but or you could walk away and not be part of it. <laughs> so maybe your spiritual gift is discernment. Mine is not, but I have a lot of leaders that our discerners. And so um, I adhere to them for some of those positions like leading SPRC, our human resources, or leading our ad council. Um, so that's a gift they have. And I use it because, you know, some of us just, you know, we can't have, I, you can't be, you know, all things to all people. You have strengths and you have weaknesses. Not that you shouldn't work on your weaknesses, but you should you know, be with people that have that strength and see how they use that gift. Because a lot of times, you know, um, 
not all pastors are good at preaching or really strong at preaching, yet that's still our job. Not all preachers are good at leading administrative meetings, but yet that's still part of our job. So we have to be growing in that. Even though it's not our gift, we look for people that are discerners to be on that committee, but we also have to do, you know, multiple things. So you probably have multiple things you have to do in your job and not all of them are your strong suit. However, you're growing in that, um, which means it's probably not your gift and a spiritual gift is used to bring glory to God. But sometimes we got 16 jobs and one job that we have to do. So I just pray that um, you will find your spiritual gift and you will use it to glorify God. So let's pray. Lord, we want to bring you honor in the way that we live and glory in how we use our unique talents and spiritual gifts. Make your calling clear to us so that we can fulfill it. Amen. All right. This Sunday, I'm talking about something. Not done yet, so pray I get it done. Starting a new sermon series called Forgotten Virtues. So to uh, Sunday's virtue that we're going to talk about is honor. And we're going to use that scripture in Mark 6 where Jesus goes from the Sea of Galilee, gets done talking about parables and um, to his disciples and him and his disciples go back to his hometown where he grew up, not his birthplace, Bethlehem, but his hometown. And people are amazed at how he preaches in the synagogue on Sunday, but then they start saying, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't he the carpenters? It wasn't he a carpenter, a common laborer? And isn't he Mary's son? Now that shows definite disrespect and no honor because the gossip about Mary not having a baby before her and Joseph were married um, probably means that Jesus, well, we know Jesus was Joseph was not Jesus's father, but they're implying that he's a illegitimate child. And so that's definitely no honor for Christ. And then Jesus says, you know, a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. So we're going to talk about that. I'm not sure how to do it. We're going to talk about the people that the Bible tells us we should honor, not the people, the position that they hold. And um, what happens when we don't honor that position? Just so you know, Jesus didn't stick around. He left. So we'll talk about that this Sunday, 9 a.m. right here, live stream if you want to watch it or you can watch it or you can come in person and um, at 9 a.m. to Kingsley Methodist Church, 113 Blair Street in Kingsley. Either way, have a good weekend. Bye-bye.